They're called a Mystic. You can also find one in the Mages Guild if you're in a different area. Um, so if you can't find one where you're at, check the Mages Guild. Come up to him, you can talk with him. Welcome to Go to the store. Scroll down, you can see you can buy full soul gems, ones that already have souls in them, um, for 500 gold. Or you can buy empty ones. Empty ones are only 50 gold. Welcome back to the Chaos, everybody. I am Chaos Eclipse. Today we are going to be playing a little bit of ESO. I know I've been doing a lot of ESO lately. I don't want my ESO Plus subscription to kind of go to waste, so that's why I've been playing it a lot. Um, but I came across a few things that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so first things first, as you know, at level 15 we did get a back bar. I haven't really done much with the back bar. Um, originally I had an Inferno staff on there, and then I switched it over to a um, Resto staff. The Resto staff, I literally just equipped, and I just want to show you guys here. If we take a look at our skills, and we go to the Restoration staff here, you can see it's already level 7. So, even though I had the Inferno staff equipped, um, it's only level 4, and I didn't really use it that much. So, um, when you have an item on your back bar, so if we switch over to our back bar, you can see here, this is my Resto staff, it's for healing. Obviously, if I want to heal her, I just cast it on her, which she doesn't need heals, so it's not going to work. But you can see that I have one ability down there. It is called Grand Healing. You just hit Square, and then you hit R2, and it will heal in this circle here. Um, you can change that to where you don't have to hit it twice. So if I hit Square, you can see that I can move it to another area or anything like that. If you get good at, and I say this because I mean this, if you get good at casting where you want to cast, um, so like if I instantly want to cast over there without needing to hit square then R2 again, and I know what I'm doing, you can actually change that. Um, if you come into your options here, and you go, is it combat? I was already on it. And you go to combat, um, it is... Um, bear with me here. Um, actually, while I'm doing this, you guys can see that I also turned on the, um, the combat numbers. So when I'm fighting and everything, you guys can actually see the numbers of the damage and everything that I'm doing. That's not to show off or anything because I'm not strong at all. Um, but it's just so that I know how much damage is outgoing and incoming. Um, but you guys can do that too. You can also show your buffs. You can see here. Um, is it not there? Gameplay. Mm, no, it's in here somewhere. This one. So, quick cast ground abilities, um, if you set this to on, when you cast it, it'll automatically cast over there. Wherever you're pointing at, that's where it's going to cast. So, if you want to cast it on yourself, point it here. But, just be careful with that, because if you're not used to it, and you don't know what you're doing, you will end up casting it either here, and you mean to cast it over there, or you'll cast it over there, and you mean to cast it here. So, just be careful with it, especially with heals, because that is a big one. So... Um, for now, I'm going to leave it off. Um, I just want to show you guys. Actually, I'll leave it on automatic because that is... Um, I don't know what automatic is versus uh, off. But, I mean, you can read it there. Um, but the other thing is uh, I turned on the auto loot. So, here is where you turn on the auto loot on the uh, gameplay here. Um, if you guys watched the last one, you guys seen my other character that automatically has uh, everything being picked up. So when I pick up this uh, this piece of oak here, it'll automatically go into my inventory. I won't have to like wait and then do take all or whatever. Um, but that is the other thing that I wanted to talk about. So right now I'm getting oak and I'm finding maple. Um, maple is your lower grade woodworking stuff. But because I did level up my woodworking recently, you can see here with our woodworking, we're at level 9 now, so now it's going to start going into that next higher stuff that I can craft for them. So it's going to, every now and then I'll get a little bit of oak from, uh, for the higher levels, and then the lower levels it'll still be giving me maple. Um, 
the stuff that you find around the map is going to scale with whatever level you're looking for. So if your blacksmithing was never leveled, even if your character is a higher level, you're still only going to be finding iron and possibly high iron. Um, but you won't find like Rubidite or anything like that because that's more endgame stuff. Um, the exceptions are this here, which is an alchemy thing. Alchemy, you're going to find all kinds of stuff for alchemy. And then um, enchanting, you're going to find rune stones that, that the, uh, the rune stones are just going to be... Um, any any type of rune stone because you can use them no matter what. Let's see here. Hey, heavy sack. Take that too. One time I reached into a oh, sack like that and found that. a bunch okay, of life. Okay, so was what I was talking day. about with the um, with the staff here, um, like I said, I just equipped this staff. This is just a faster way to level your. Um, your different weapon skills. You can also do this with your... Actually, you can do it with anything. Well, you can do it with your class skills. You can do it with your weapon skills, your armor skills. Um, and that's it. So, let me at least go over how each one of these is leveled. So, first of all, you have your ability bar down there at the bottom. You can see that is the back bar, because that's my secondary weapon. And that's the front bar. So... This is a bar that I normally run with. Um, this is the one that I kill everything with. And then the back bar is just extra. If you want extra damage back there, you can even put the same type of weapons on your back bar and put different abilities for the same type of weapons, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Um, but most of the time when you're playing the game, you're gonna be staying on that front bar. You're gonna be running around, you're gonna be killing everything using your front bar. And the back bar is not gonna get much action unless you're, um, like trying to learn to uh, switch between the two or something to that effect where you're going to be using it a lot more. Um, just keep that in mind. Now the reason why I mention that is because if that's how you're playing without switching and you're just staying on that front bar, everything on that front bar is going to be leveling. Everything on the doing back bar is going to be leveling but much slower because it's only going to be getting XP when you're using that back bar. So what I mean by that is like right now with my skills, if you take a look at the skills I currently have equipped, um, I have the Concealed Weapon, I have Lotus Fan, I have Consuming Trap, Funnel Health, and Grand Healing, and then we have our ultimate, which is Soul Tether. Soul Tether, Funnel Health, Lotus Fan, and Concealed Weapon are all class skills. So you can see the Lotus Fan is there under Assassination, um, Concealed Weapon is under Shadow, and Funnel Health and Soul Tether are both under Siphoning. So these three are leveling constantly because I have those equipped. Um, Soul Trap is a little bit of a different one. I'll explain that in a minute. But the Grand Healing I actually got from the Restoration class. And I put it on the front bar even though I can't use it. I literally, if I hit R1, I can't use the Grand Healing. I'm hitting R1 right now. Um, but you can even see at the top, top right, it says Ability Requires Restoration Staff. But when you're playing... Because it's on your front bar and you're getting your kills and everything with your front bar, you're doing exploration with your front bar, um, anything you do with your front bar, picking up items, anything that gives you XP goes for, uh, gives XP to anything that's on that front bar. So right now, um, you can see even Ember got 57, excuse me, 57 XP for that, uh, that little kill right there. Um, the restoration staff is also getting XP for, for doing random stuff. For me running around, for me killing, everything else, because of that one ability that I have equipped there. So if we take something like, and I'll even show you guys. Um, I think I have a bow. Let's see if we have a bow. Uh, inventory. So you're going to look for a main hand backup. That is your secondary bar. And look at that. There's a bow right there. We're going to go ahead and equip the bow. Now, the only bad part uh, between the pros and cons is you do have to at least buy one skill. So the only skill I have here is Snipe. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to purchase Snipe. And then I'm going to assign it where the Grand Healing was on the front bar. I'm not even going to assign it to the back bar. The back bar I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to leave with the Grand Healing on there. I don't even care. Um, so here's my bow. I can't even do any attacks other than the normal um, base attack. Um, but when I start doing anything that gives me XP, 
um, and I have the front bar equipped here. So I'm going to start getting XP now for that front bar. So if we take a look at, let's see if we can kill this, uh, this world boss that's right here. We're right by it. We're going to go kill that world boss and we'll see how many levels we get out of, um, out of this for the bow. Even though we're not going to use the bow, we're going to stay on the front bar the entire time and we're going to kill this boss and we'll see how many levels we get off of it. Keep in mind it is currently level 2. Um, but yeah, we're going to run over there and we're going to kill it. Uh, is this him? That's probably him. Ooh, that's level 3. We might die. Um, but yeah, we're still going to try it though. So let's start off with that. And we're going to come in here. Oh, this is Okay, we got some help, we got some help. We're okay, we're okay. Don't panic. Don't panic. Oh, don't kill Ember, don't kill Ember. Ate one of the uh, pies down there on the bottom left. I think that one of these guys gives me magic. I'm just wondering why my water just jumped up down there. He's doing more damage than me, that's why he's aggroed on me. He's gonna die, but it's okay though. I mean, it's not okay, but like you don't lose uh, reputation with her, I don't think. Um, like she'll still be friendly and everything and she'll eventually uh, come back at this point to um, not be after until, uh, until she uh, or until we kill him or until we're out of combat period. Keep in mind we haven't used any bow stuff, we haven't switched to the back end. Um, but we do have that bow ability on that front bar there. Yeah. Our weapons. Oh, our weapons out of the... The thing that you see popping up at the bottom is the shackle conduit like that. And it says time going purple. That is someone that has a synergy ability. I'll go over that in a different uh, video. So there we go. We killed Sharp Fang. Ember's back alive. We got a whole bunch of items there. Now let's take a look. And we're just going to wait for um, our bow stuff here. So we should have at least gotten one level out of it. Is it not going to pop up? Did we not get a level at all? Did I make everybody look? There it goes. So we got a level out of it. You guys saw it there. Um, it went from two almost to four. Um, but even still just running around doing whatever, it is going to help us level. Um, we're going to go to inventory. We're going to look at our main hand here. Yeah, see our main hand, it ran out of the enchantment there. So it's not dealing the magicka damage and we're not restoring it. Same thing with our offhand, which was flame. So if we hit triangle, nope. Yeah, if we hit triangle for more actions, we can do charge. It's going to take one of our soul gems. Go ahead and do that, and same thing with this one. There we go. Now we have that back, and the little red uh, thing down there at the bottom is gone. If we kill this one, because I think this is a little bit of a higher level, that's why it has a little bar, a little health bar, um, we could get level 4 out of our bow. Or at least the closer to it. Get it? Yep, there you go. Bow increased to level 4. So what this is doing is. Because it's on the front bar, like I said, you're getting XP for that ability specifically. So if we take a look at the ability, you can see Snipe was level 1 when we equipped it. It's already level 3. So on top of the skill itself leveling, we're also leveling Bow itself. So um, I didn't really go over this, but with the different abilities, so Snipe, anything you get will start at level 1. It goes all the way to usually I think it's level 5. Like when it hits level 5, it'll let you morph it. So I think I had one in here that looked like it had a morph ability. Yeah, so my Shadow Cloak here, um, that little symbol to the left of it, 
um, because it's level 4 and it's maxed out, I can now morph it. So if I hit X on it to morph, it'll give you two different abilities. It'll still have the original thing on it, so you cloak yourself in shadow to become uh, invisible for three seconds. But the new effect, which is the secondary thing that it will add to it once you morph it, this one would guarantee a critical strike on your next attack. Cost decreases as the ability ranks up. Or we can go with Dark Cloak. It still gives you the um, the three seconds of turning invisible. Um, but it no longer... Oh, actually, no. This one no longer in grants invisibility. But now it heals over time based on your max health and grants minor protection rather than major prophecy and prophecy and savagery. So, a little bit different for that one. Um, it still doesn't keep the same thing. Most of the time they do and they just give you an added effect. Um, but yeah. So you just have to read through those or possibly go online and take a look at, you know, what you guys want to, um, uh, like if you guys want to look up a build or something like that. Uh, it just depends on, like I said before, how you guys are planning on playing. So right now what I was doing is I'm actually running around and I'm doing the dailies for my character. So I already leveled up. <clears throat> Sorry, not leveled up. I already did the uh, the crits, not crits, the writs for the crafting for everything. Um, on top of that, I did the uh, the daily points that you would put into your character, um, or not into your character, into your writing skill. And then now, what I'm working on is doing the dailies for the um, for the different guilds. So, speaking of that, I said that I was going to tell you guys um, how to level up all of the skills. So, your Khajiit skill, that is your, um, it's a passive skill no matter what. That's going to level on its own. I don't even think it goes any further. I think that's just a passive uh, trait that you have, period, just for being a Khajiit. Um, or whatever class you pick, of course. Um, but from there, the other ones, I'm trying to jump up here. I don't want to accidentally pop one of them. Um, so if we take a look real quick. So the class ones here, like I said, they're going to level based on you having something equipped from these. Same thing with any of these uh, things here. So you can see that, you know, the restoration staff, I can morph the grand healing now. Um, even though uh, it's only level 7 or whatever, I can morph this one if I choose to do so. I probably won't, I just want to level up the healing all the way to 50, uh, well the restoration staff all the way to 50 so I can look at these passives and everything later. Most of the time uh, you can see here with weapons, you do have to have that weapon equipped in order to receive that passive. So you can see there um, right under Essence Strain 1 it says with restoration staff equipped. So none of that underneath that it's explaining is going to matter unless you're actually using a restoration staff. But I still want to level this up because if in the future I decide to go as a healer or something like that or I just want to off heal for somebody or a group or something, I want to make sure that this is leveled up. So you don't have to do this with everything, it's just how I like to play. Um, our dual wield is the highest obviously because we've been using the daggers the whole time and I don't even have anything out of there equipped but because we have the dual, uh, the dual wield daggers that's why that one's leveling. Um, uh, same thing with light armor, medium armor, heavy, heavy armor, as long as you have at least one piece of armor from that class, these will be leveling on their own. Um, for the world ones, these ones are a bit different. Uh, excavation, you have to actually be doing excavation. Um, I've heard this word pronounced a whole bunch of times. It's basically the thievery part, um, of the, the game. It's not the thieves guild but it is like pickpocketing, things like that. Uh, it has to do with this Thieves Guild because this is the stuff you would sell to the to the fence if you're stealing and all that. Um, this only levels by you stealing, by you pickpocketing. Um, the scrying, that goes in hand with the excavation. So if you're scrying, you're doing the excavating, those are two are gonna level together for the most part. Soul Magic is the one that is almost completely different. This one is only leveled by doing the main story in the game. You will never level this. You'll still level, so right now I have soul magic equipped. I am leveling consuming uh, trap, but I won't unlock anything else because, um, actually no, I don't even think it'll do that. I think it's only level two because we, we equipped it and that's it. Like I think it'll stop it too. Anyway, 
to unlock the rest of them though if you want the rest of them you do have to finish the the story in the game and i'll show you guys how to take a look at the actual main story because we talked a little bit about main story stuff before but we haven't actually gone gone over it uh the guilds here for the majority of them you have to do their dailies uh, the Dark Brotherhood has dailies, the Fighters Guild has dailies, the Fighters Guild also levels off of uh, killing Daedra uh, enemies, so as long as you're killing Daedras, that's where you're going to level your Fighters Guild, that's probably why that one's three. Um, Blade of Woe, you can use it, I believe, to level to level the Dark Brotherhood, but the faster way is just by doing the, um, the dailies with them, or by going along with their storyline, they do have their own little storyline. Most of these actually have their own little storyline. You can do those. It'll probably get you to higher levels. Um, same thing with the Mages Guild. Um, you have to actually be using it um, or doing their dailies. Sigic Order, that one I believe takes a really long time. That one only happens when you loot the little um, portal chest type things after the rune goes away that we talked about before. Or if you're actually closing the Sigic Order portals that you find throughout the world. I think they're pretty rare. They become more common the higher level it is. Um, but I think for the most part they're pretty rare so that one would probably actually take the longest. Thieves Guild, this one can be done a whole bunch of different ways. It will level with the... Uh, this thing. Le Le Legger Domain. Ledger Domain. I don't know what it's called. Um, it'll level with that. So from stealing everything it will also level if you're doing the dailies for it. You go to guild, they have uh, missions where they will actually send you into someone's house or someone's mansion or a warehouse or something, and they will tell you to look for a specific item. It is a good way to make money if you're doing the Thieves Guild dailies, just because the Thieves Guild, once they send you over to that place, you can steal all the items in the house, give them their one item that they require you to give them for the daily, and then everything else you can sell. Um, if you get caught though, you do get less money from the quest itself and less experience. But if you come out doing perfect where you weren't spotted, you weren't seen, you don't have a bounty or anything, that's the best way to do it. Undaunted is leveled by doing the, um, the random dungeons per day. So make sure that you guys are queuing up for the random dungeons per day. For the Alliance War, the Assault and the Support, these are only leveled um, inside of uh, Cyrodiil, if I'm not mistaken. Because I think even using the items, like we've been using Vigor, which we had equipped before, you can see it's still only level 1. Um, even using Vigor, it may level Vigor, but it won't level the actual Assault uh, skill line here. So you, you do have to go into Cyrodiil and do both of these things. Uh, like I said, this one is just going to level naturally on its own just because you're a Khajiit or whatever class you are. And then all of these are going to level based on what you're doing with them. I will say the fastest way to level the ones where you can actually deconstruct things. So blacksmithing, coughing, enchanting, jewel crafting, and woodworking. Those ones, um, deconstructing is probably the fastest way to level those. Alchemy and provisioning is only by actually creating the items. So the more you do them, the the more they're going to level, um, keep up with those writs. And I think that is pretty much it. Um, like I said, I just wanted to point out everything. I ran into um, leveling my my restoration staff while I was doing the, uh, the daily. And I didn't think I had mentioned that to you guys, which I still don't think I did. Um, but that's why I wanted to bring it up now. So you guys can level everything as you're playing. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying to do this once again, it is completely up to you how you play the game, um, it is just a suggestion, because in the future if you're playing, and like me, if you have a Magicka character, and you're enjoying it, you're playing or whatever, you get to max level, all of a sudden, the game changes, like I said it would, um, you know, they do an update or something, and now the stamina class for your character is um, outputting more DPS than the... Than the other I class. So what happens what now carry. is you may want to switch over to a stamina class and if so that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, you can 100% go and do that. Uh, my suggestion would be to go and reset your skills and just switch over to stamina. But if you're using Magicka and all your skills are all the current skills that you're using, so like all the ones that we have equipped here, are based off of uh, Magicka. You're going to have to switch those over to Stamina. When you switch them over to Stamina, you may want to switch weapons. Um, 
Not all of these weapons down here have Magicka and Stamina. I think the majority of them do, um, but some are obviously better than others. So, say you're doing the dual wielding in your Magicka and then you realize, oh, I can do Stamina, which would, you know, I would need like a bow and a one hand, or a, sorry, a two handed um, sword or something like that. And if that's what you want to do, now you switch over, but you don't have any two-handed because you never leveled it. You don't have any bow because you never leveled it. So I would suggest while you're not using all of your abilities down at the bottom and you're still just, you know, leveling up, doing easy stuff, go ahead and equip a random skill onto your skill line down there on the bottom. Make sure it's on your active bar, even if you're not using that skill, and it will level it for you. And then I do have one bonus thing here for you guys. We are going to go and take a look. Um, this quest that we just got actually just reminded me of it. It was this one here. Um, I think this is the same mission too. It's one I got before. Um, so how I was just talking about how how leveling your crafting abilities is going to um, the easiest way is going to be by deconstructing stuff. My suggestion is to go into a delve once it, once you find one, and I will show you one, the one that I like using. Um, go into a delve that has a bunch of tiny containers. So first, let's go to Stone Falls. Now, keep in mind, if you're in these other areas, you can find one. Um, it's just going to take some time. This is just the one that I know of because when I originally started the game, they made you go and order it, and I know this area better than any other area. Yeah, he just said he's deconstructing every day. So keep that in mind, guys. You need to do it. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go to Davin's Watch. We're going to confirm that. And I did notice something. There's actually a stone shard that's not I'm far good. from where we... I well, I mean, it's the opposite direction, but it's not far in general. There's a stone shard there. So we're going to go grab that real quick. Where's that marker? Stop that. So let's go grab this uh, this marker. Hold, adventurer. I'm sorry, stone shard. You're the one I sky shard. I don't know why I kept saying stone shard. Um, it's a sky shard. But so the whole thing that I was talking about with um, leveling your crafting. Um, the reason why I say that you want to go into a delve that's going to give you, or not going to give you, but it has a smaller. Um, containers is because a lot of times people ignore those small containers so even though it's a public dungeon <clears throat> public dungeon you can still run through there and you can find a ton of stuff a lot of people overlook those they think that there's nothing in them or they think it's going to be really small items I promise you they are worth checking um, and the fact that they're in a dungeon they are going to give you XP just for looting them and you're also going to get XP when you're deconstructing the items that will come out of them um, the other day I was doing this and I actually found a few motifs even. Um, so once you have those motifs, you can learn them to learn different styles of crafting or you can learn them, or I'm sorry, you can sell them using a guild trader or you can try selling them yourself. Um, for those of you that don't know, you can uh, do text chat. I'm sure you guys have seen it pop up on the bottom right. For the PS5, you just hold the, no, you don't hold it. Tap it, no. Remember how to pull up the chat. There it is. So you'll hit the options button and you'll hit square and that'll pull up your chat and then you can say, I think you can shout, um, you know, just you can talk in there. So if you have an item, it'll let you link the item in there. You can just click on the item, it'll say link in chat. You do that first and just say like willing to sell or something like that. If someone's interested, they'll message you and then you can let them know your prices. So, hey, I'm looking for, you know, 30k. And they're like, ah, that's too much. And I'm like, well, sucks to be you. Because you should never drop your price for someone else, guys. Unless you're, like, way overpricing it. But you'll learn um, how much to sell stuff for and, you know, what's worth what and stuff. So, most of the time, the styles are worth a decent amount. Just make sure that they can't find it somewhere lower. Because if you're selling a style for, like, 10k and they know that they can get it for 5k somewhere else, um it's not really going to be worth your time because they're like, no, well, I'm not paying that. So this is a delve that I come to. Um, it's called the Inner Sea Armature. So we're going to go in here. 
and like I said this one has a ton of tiny little things see look someone just came in here before us so this urn should be empty he didn't loot it so we got a dwarven gear out of that you'll see all the loot down on the bottom left it looks like they did kill things here they killed the guys there just looking for loot they didn't loot the crate we got some spices there and I'm just going slow on purpose here because some of these uh, little containers are hard to miss or hard to see. Look, there's a chest right here that they just ran past. So let's open up the chest. Oh, nope, they took all the good items and they left the rest. Because that didn't even let me lockpick it. We're going to take this. Most of the time in this place there are small things on the table like this one here. A Dwemer jug. We're going to search that. You can see I got a lockpick out of it. There's another one on the floor there, another Dwarven gear. Um, I swear if I don't get something good out of this place, it's going to make me mad because I'm trying to show you guys something. So here's some urns that they look over. Look at that, a blueprint. Haha, -ha, down in the bottom left. So it's a green item. Even if you don't want to use it, you can sell it. We got a necklace that we can break down. Lockpick. And you guys can stay in here because the loot does respawn. Um, you can just keep circling this if you want. I wouldn't say stay in here forever. Um, but like I said, it is a decent place to come and get loot. Um, there is a sky shard right behind me, but I've already gotten this one. That's why it's not glowing. Um, here's another urn. Let's search that one. Another lockpick. There's a little urn there on the table. Got another piece of armor we can break down. There's a pot. Look at that, a recipe. Um, another thing we can break down. Lockpick. Another lockpick. I don't mind the lockpicks here because I do do a lot of uh, like if I see the best I can. Keep moving. I don't think there's anything back here. Let's take a look. look at that. Some urns. Nothing. Something we can break down. Nothing. Lock it. Lock it. Nothing. These guys are the gear. I don't remember what the dwarven gear are for. Maybe it has to be in the Yeah, that was just a little bit of the top right. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about There's actually one other thing. So you see how these spiders are coming out of this like, vent thing that's here on the ground? Um, you can actually close that vent and you will get items out of it. I'll show you this. Don't these guys. So first, let's come back here and close this vent. It's called the steam pipe. There you go. We closed it. We didn't get anything out of it, but that's okay. Close this one. And look at that, we got two items out of that. A restoration staff and a minor glyph of magicka. Take that. Check the urns. And for those who are interested in looking for certain gear types, um, you guys can go on Google and you can do that. We got a green ring from him. Um, you guys can go on Google and you can look at Whatever the gear type is you're looking for, just type it in on Google and type in like ESO for Elder Scrolls Online. Um, and it will tell you where that drops because I'd never went over this either, but 
certain gear drops in certain areas. Um, so if you're looking for uh, a, a specific style or something like that, usually you can find it in whatever area it tells you it's going to drop you in. Are amazing. There's a tattered note there, which I think is lore, but it's not glowing for me because I already got it. Um, did I have went? I will go that way when we come back. Oh, here's a loot or a chest that we have. Nobody's opened. Where the lockpicks come in handy. I always have like a ton of lockpicks. I rarely break these things. You know, like the uh, the medium ones and stuff, or master ones. I meant. I don't know. I said medium. He just ran past all of this stuff, which, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's anything special in here. But, like I said, I have found motifs and stuff in here before, and if people are just running past them, that's fine. More stuff for me. I will gladly stay behind here and check all the little boxes and everything. Look at that steel girdle we can break down. That's actually the boss right there. I don't know why nobody's attacking. I figured that's why they were standing around, but maybe not. Maybe they're just rolling through their gear. Yeah. 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 So that glowing ability that you guys see on the ground, that's not me. That's actually one of Ember's abilities. Um, it's her casting like a storm thing on the ground. Which actually I need to check her abilities because she did level up. So um, I want to make sure that we are keeping up with her stuff. All this stuff that I'm looting here, um, this is all like if it comes out of a sack or a crate or like a, a basket like that, usually it's just food items. But I still pick them up for the uh, for the provisioning and for the uh, what's it called? The provisioning and the alchemy because um, some of the stuff you can use for alchemy. So we need to be quick. We're going to go in here. Inventory, main hand. Um, let's get rid of this. Get our blue item. There we go. Right, and then, 
before we kill anything else because we're going to need more space and we already know it. We're going to go inventory, we're going to go down to here and we're going to see stuff that we um, don't really need. Uh, well, you know what? We'll wait, we'll wait. Because if we don't get anything else, I don't want to waste stuff that we could be breaking down. And then you can still check the little pots and everything on the way back out. Look at that, that one's already respawned. We got a lockpick out of it. likes killing the blender. She also likes killing um, Daedra, I think. Because she makes comments when you're doing it. Okay, so there's a staff that has um, defending on it. So we're going to go in our inventory. We're going to get rid of this. Because it doesn't have anything on it. And we might not even need this, but it's another item that we can break down if we can't research it. So. Checking all the little stuff on the way out. And this time we're going to go this way because we came in from the other way, so we're going to go out this way. We're still going to do the same thing. We're just going to clear out some of these guys. Anything that we can just get rid of. So we can learn that. We can learn that. Um, actually, we can get rid of a lot of these trash items. So the ones that we don't have much of, so one of those, one of those, one of those. Three of those. Two. Not too concerned on the gold portion of the game. You'll get gold as you're playing the game. Don't get me wrong, if you guys need gold and keep those over the other things, just you guys are to, you know, prioritize. Figure out what you need, what you don't need, and go from there. There's a jug. Yeah, I've got another uh, recipe there. Uh, cauldron, I'm not going to search because if I hit X on it, it's just going to give me like a food or something that I don't really want, probably. So we're just not even going to search it. You can. I don't know if you can get recipes or anything from it. Um, most of the time it will just be the food itself, but I'm not worried about the food. Got natural water out of that. Some adamantite. Adamantite. I don't know what it said. Look at that. Did you see what I saw? We just got that. This is the one I found before. The funny thing is I can't learn either one of these. If you look in the top right, it says requires rank 9 of any one of the um, level uh, crafting stuff. So uh, metalworking, tailoring, or woodwork. Okay. So I can't learn either one of these yet, but we're going to hold on to them because now we'll learn how to make Dwemer chests and we'll learn how to make uh, Dwemer boots. Now that's just the styles of Dwemer. You don't actually learn all of the chests or anything like that. It's just a style. So when you're running through the game, look at that, another blueprint. Uh, when you're running through the game um, and you're crafting stuff, you know how we did like the... Um, the specific styles like the wood elf and stuff, I think that's what we're wearing. Um, that is what that relates to. We're talking about the style, so the way it looks. But it's still something that people chase after, so I would say to go for it. Um, just because you, if you, even if you don't want it, you can sell it. Look at that, we can learn both of these. These, so that says requires woodworking 5. You can still learn it, you just can't craft it until 5. We can learn both of those. That opened up two more spots. So we can leave this staff now. And then we can start making our way out because we full circled this place. This is 
the way out? No. Wait, it is this way. Oh, we went. Oh, we went the wrong way. Also, um, because people break their lockpicks so easily, I don't, I'm not trying to talk crap about anyone who can't do lockpicking. Um, it is hard for some people, but because people break them so easily, and I don't, um, if you're like myself and you don't have an issue with lockpicking, um, to where you're not, like, breaking them all the time, you'll have an excess of lockpicks. That's another thing that you guys can end up going and selling to other people, because there's a lot of people looking for lockpicks. Especially if they're trying to level like their thieves skills and stuff like that and they keep breaking them So just keep an eye out for that as well. And then same thing with soul gems um, So you can buy full soul gems and you can buy empty soul gems um, Because we're headed back. I will actually show you guys where you can get those from Because it is going to be there where we're headed um, And then uh, it's up to you on how much you want to sell them for. So, first we're going to go to Gavin's Watch, which is just back uh, in the main town here. And we're only going to go there for the... Um, in order to get to uh, the way track. But, you can do this in any major town um, for the Soul Gem, so I'll show you real quick. So, let's get back over there real fast. Save real fast, but we're running as fast as we can. Alright, keep an eye on this area right here. This area has like a whole bunch of like enemies together. These are all enemies. Um, they're neutral, that's why they're yellow. But you can still kill them. Um, I just want to point that out real quick. This is where we're going to come back to real fast as well. So we're going to go in here, the way shrine is up over there, but we're going to go in here, this is Davin's Watch. This is the third place that you'll come to if you're following the storyline and if you are, um, if you started in the area where I did. So we started in, uh, Bleak Rock Way Shrine, or Bleak Rock, Bleak Rock Isle, this is where we started. Once we completed that, it took us to Balfoyan, which is technically right next to there, this little area here. And then when you leave there, it puts you in Davin's Watch, which is this area. Or, sorry, Stone Falls, which is this area. And then Davin's Watch is the main town where you'll see all the crafting and everything. So, once you're here, you'll look for this person here. They're called a Mystic. You can also find one in the Mages Guild if you're in a different area. Um, so if you can't find one where you're at, check the Mages Guild. Come up to him, you can talk with him. Welcome to Go to the store. Scroll down, you can see you can buy full soul gems, ones that already have souls in them. Um, for 500 gold or you can buy empty ones empty ones are only 50 gold so we're gonna buy 10 empty ones one oh I was gonna hit it I was gonna hit it 10 times all right but look at that so for the price of one one full one we're gonna buy 10 empty ones so we're gonna buy 10 there that did fill up our inventory so what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy more bag space Come to a pack merchant. Obviously, this part you don't have to do unless All my you can bags are it. genuine sky. Pack merchant. It's only 11k. We have 21k. We're gonna accept it. Boom. We got 10 more slots. Well. So. Now what you can do. Yes. Is you can race? come back out. And you can fill your soul gems. That's the whole reason why we have this skill um, on the soul magic here, the one called consuming uh, trap. If you guys don't remember what it does. First of all, it is a Magicka cost ability. As you can see, it costs uh, 2,619 Magicka to use it. But it says, lay claim to an enemy soul dealing 9,834 Magicka damage over 20 seconds. So it's active for 20 seconds. If the affected enemy dies, you fill an empty soul gem. You also heal for 4,224 health. 
and you restore 4,856 Magicka and 3,595 Stamina. This portion of the ability scales off your max health, Magicka, and Stamina. So th that means that those numbers might be different for you if you're not the same level as me and if you don't have the same uh, whatever my highest stat is, which is probably my Magic. Um, so those numbers might be different for you. But the main thing to point out is that very first one there that I read, it says lay claim to an enemy soul dealing the 9,834 Magicka damage over 20 seconds. So if you kill the enemy within 20 seconds of casting that, it will claim their soul and it'll put it into one of your empty soul gems. If we look at our inventory here, where are the soul gems? You can see we have the 10 empty ones, we have 31 full ones. The crown soul gems I get from uh, doing claiming the uh, the daily things. Um, I think when you very first log in the first time, like if you're uh, completely new to the game, I think they give you some as well. But we have 31 full and 10 empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to kill one of these enemies. We're going to pick this one here. I can kill him in 20 seconds at full health. If you can't, don't cast until he's like half health. But I'm going to start with that attack. So it is my circle ability down there. You can look at skills. Go back up to the top here. You can see that my consuming trap is on my circle button. So I'm going to start off with circle. You'll see a little white glow on him. There's the white glow. I need to kill him within 20 seconds. There you go. Bottom left, it says I got a soul gem. I didn't loot a soul gem. I had a soul gem. The only thing that it did is it filled one from my um, from my thing here. So it went to 9 and this one to 32. So now we can kill 9 other ones real quick and we can get 10 soul gems um, for basically the price of one of them. The reason why I point this out is because a lot of times... I didn't even pass it. That time. I didn't mean to do that either. I don't know if that'll work. Uh, it actually did. It. It wasn't to hit it. Yeah, we built two there. Okay. Um... But anyway, uh, so the reason why I'm pointing this out is because soul gems are used to charge your items. So you're going to start needing a lot of them if you are using enchants. Um, the other thing is if you if you want, I'm not suggesting you do this because I think you should keep all the soul gems that you currently have. Um, but if you want, you can actually sell full soul gems. A lot of times people are too lazy to just go and um, fill their own. So they'll ask for them at a reduced price. If you're only paying 10 per soul gem, and you're going and you're selling them yourself, and you get an excess of soul gems, sure, go sell them if you want. Um, just don't sell them for 500 apiece, because obviously they can just go so and they can get it there. Now, still try to sell it for 500 apiece, because a lot of times people don't know that you can actually buy them from the Mystic. Um, I know like veteran players who didn't know that you could buy them. So, just keep that in mind. And we didn't get a soul gem there, so I think I might have already gotten all of them full. Yep, no more empty ones, and we have 41 full. So there we go. So now we can come out of here. We can go back to the Way Shrine. You can um, deconstruct all the weapons and everything here if you want, but we're going to go turn in the quest too, so that's the only reason I'm going back to more hold. Uh, zoom out. Mournhold is the one right below it. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Deshaun, which has Mournhold here. We'll go to the Way Shrine. Right here. Let's go turn in the quest first. Yeah. Now, normally, if race? my inventory is full, I'm going to want to break stuff down first. Um, Keep in mind if you don't have ESO Plus and your inventory is full, it may not let you break items down because that item you're trying to break down will usually give you one or two items and if that's the case and you don't have the ESO Plus, it means it'll take up more space so it's just not going to let you break anything down. If that's the case, you can either destroy trash items or sell trash items um, or you can go straight to your bank, deposit a few items in your bank if you have space in there and then go back and destroy something. Come to him. Now that's turn well, that in. Is Look at that. We got some undaunted uh, merits there, and we leveled up our undaunted by ten little points, which is fine. Better than nothing. And we're gonna come over here and we're gonna start breaking all of our items down. So 
we're going to start with enchanting because I noticed we do have quite a bit of glyphs. So we're going to come in here. Enchanting is right here on this table. We're going to go to extract. We're going to do all of them because I don't plan on really using enchants. I showed you guys before, um, but I don't plan on using them until I'm actually a higher level. Because so. you're going to you're going to be switching weapons a lot and everything. And if you're making enchants for every time you do it, yes, you'll level your enchanting, but you're also wasting supplies. So just be careful with that. You got to find a good balance there. Um, and then the rest of the stuff we are going to come and break down. So we're going to start over here with woodworking. Keep in mind if you guys do need to research and you have a slot available, make sure you guys are doing that. Now it does say that I have one of two researching. I think that is because I put a point into the woodwork. Working to where we can start doing at least two of this. Yep, I put one into carpentry. So now my um, my reduced times are going to be by 5% and it lets me do two items at once. So I can do another wood item. We're going to come in here. Um, let's see, are we researching something right now? Yeah, so we're researching this one right now. Which is going to take eight hours. Are we researching a second item? We're not. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And there we go. So now that takes up both slots. If I try doing another one, it's going to tell me in the top right that all the slots are being used. Then we go to deconstruct and look at that. We can break down all of these items. We're going to keep the restoration staff, the green one. Actually, we'll keep one of the white ones. It's not really going to matter too much. I think this one we'll get more for if we break down. And then these ones we will use to level up our, um, our abilities. So break these down. Actually, you know what? I don't think we don't need any of them because we can just I already, um, I, I had one to unlock the ability. Now that the ability is unlocked, I don't really need it anymore. So there's several ways you can do this. You can either hit square or you can hit X and then tap square. That'll break one down or you can do more than one at a time and you can hold square, which will break down whatever you select at a time. I like to do them one at a time. Don't judge me guys. It seems like the, uh, the XP is higher when you're doing it one at a time. I don't know if that's factual or not. That's just what it seems like to me. The rest of these, it looks like I can research, so I'm not gonna do anything else and I don't have anything else to break down. So then we come over to our clothing here. We're gonna do the same thing. Uh, we're already researching one, so I can't do anything there. Go to deconstruct, we're gonna break these down. gave us a big chunk there. The white ones weren't giving us much, but a decent little chunk. And then we can break this one too. You can sell this one. Obviously it has the ornate thing on it. Um, it'll give you 102 gold where normally stuff is a lot cheaper. So like even this one's only 23. The ornate is for 102. Like I said, if you guys want the gold aspect, then yeah, sell that. But I'm more interested in getting the uh, XP for, for the skill. So I already have one there. Construct these. Which, okay, I was going to say, do we even have any? And we got three weapons here. And I think that's it. Oh, we can, we can do this uh, mace as well. There we go. So that is just a couple of tips for you guys um, on how to level your skills a bit faster and how they level. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know down in the comment section. Fate but once again, you thank you all for what joining me. Cool. Make sure you're hitting that like, subscribe, and the notification bell icon as it does help out the channel. It is completely free to do so. So please help me out, guys. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, but thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.